dear friends. Today we are celebrating the feast day of St Thomas, famous for his doubting and his insistence on being able to touch Jesus before he believed. Now I spoke about Thomas and his doubts directly just a few weeks ago, so today I'd like to say something a little different, to come at things from a different angle. And what I want to say to you this morning is that if you believe in the resurrection, then you are deluded. Now that might seem a little counterintuitive coming in a sermon from a vicar, but stay with me, I'm an orthodox Christian really. First of all, let me begin by pointing out that no sane person doubts that Jesus of Nazareth existed, and that his life took more or less the shape as described in our Gospels, a wandering teacher and healer who lived in Israel in the first century of our era and ended up being crucified. The truth is that of the thousands of tenured academic professionals who study the Bible and ancient Near Eastern history, the Christians, the Jews, the atheists, the agnostics, not a single one doubts the existence of Jesus. It's only the atheists who are not familiar with the field of study who you will sometimes come across arguing that Jesus was an invention of the early church. And clearly, they are the ones who are deluded. That is, once you accept any of the common academic standards regarding historical inquiry, the same historical standards that apply to our study of Roman history, for example, then to deny the existence of Jesus is deluded. But that's the key point. Once you accept the common academic standards, then certain things follow, and you cannot both accept those standards and deny that Jesus lived and died. But does the same apply to the resurrection? I would say no. The resurrection is something completely different. For it is certainly possible to believe that Jesus was alive, did certain things, healed certain people, was crucified and all the rest of it, and be completely untouched by that knowledge. To say, that's all well and good, but it makes no difference to me. That's not possible with the resurrection. For knowledge of the resurrection is not ultimately a matter of the head, that is, it's not just another item of mental furniture that needs to get packed into the brain and taken out on special occasions, a good answer for an obscure trivial pursuit question. The resurrection changes everything, and it is unique. Being unique, it's not something that fits within those common academic standards that I mentioned. It stands alone. It's not something that any reasonable person can be brought to understand and believe in the way that Jesus' existence is something that a reasonable person can be brought to understand and accept. The resurrection overturns every worldly standard that can possibly be, possibly be brought to bear, for it is not possible to accept worldly standards of judgment and accept the resurrection. It's one or the other. For truly, it is absurd. Now that's not a new insight. St Paul writes rather a lot about the foolishness of the cross overturning the wisdom of the world. In other words, it is deluded to accept the resurrection. By the standards of the world, it doesn't make sense. But then, that's the point. God sees the standards of the world. He sees what the order of the world is, what it teaches. That the strong must struggle against each other to survive, devil take the hindmost, let the poor look after themselves, they probably deserve to be poor anyway. Love is an illusion. Get rich quick. The boy who dies with the most toys wins. And so on. To believe that another way of life is possible. To believe that love is real. That forgiveness saves lives. That healing is essential to the human project. To believe that it matters what we do. That we have a duty of care to each other. To believe even beyond this that God's original intention for us was that we should flourish in this world, that God is on our side, that God doesn't just love us but actually likes our company, this is absurd, this is strange, this is deluded. And you know what? I'm happy to be deluded. The resurrection is basically an invitation. God isn't twisting our arms and forcing us to believe. It's a strange way to accomplish his purposes, if that is what he wanted. No, God is extending an invitation to us. He is saying, the world is walking one way. Come, walk with me a different way. Come, let's march the beat of a different drum. Come with me, come and be divinely deluded, that you might have life and have it in all its fullness. Now that invitation can be refused. 
we have our doubting Thomas today, but there were other people there at the time of the resurrection who saw Jesus, who saw that he was raised from the dead, and who still didn't believe. Imagine that, seeing the risen Jesus and not believing. But it's there in the story. It's perfectly reasonable and sane and sensible and wise and prudent not to believe in the resurrection. To really believe in the resurrection is to be deluded. It is to mark ourselves off as strange, as people who don't accept what the world tells us as true. It is to say that we are weird, but let's be out and proud. We are weird, and we're called to be weird for the sake of the gospel. That strange and marvellous good news that the world's verdict of crucify him, that is not the final verdict. That new life and healing and forgiveness and reconciliation are possible in this world, and that at the end, it's only those things which will remain. It must be said, if Christ were not raised from the dead, then we are of all people the most to be pitied. Calling us deluded would be too merciful. But God be praised, for alleluia, Christ is risen. <laughs>